Hands-On is sponsored in part by Elmer's Products, Inc. Manufacturers of a variety of adhesives, arts and crafts, and office products for use at home, school, or business for over 60 years. www.elmers.com Stadler Incorporated, inspiring creativity for more than 150 years. Available wherever fine art and craft supplies are sold. www.stadler.us This season of Hands-On is all about living things. Learn about the animals and plants that share our environment through great projects. We've divided them into the same classifications used by scientists. First, we divide the animal kingdom by whether or not they have a backbone. Then we look at other characteristics like what they eat, where they live, and their body temperature. The groups we'll study are amphibians, birds, fish, mammals, and reptiles. For invertebrates, we'll divide them into insects, arachnids, and crustaceans and mollusks. For plants, we'll talk about the way we see and use plants in everyday life. Every project has five steps and five main ingredients, plus you'll want to keep basic supplies like scissors, markers, toothpicks, and rulers on hand. Remember, be creative, and let's learn about living things. Our first classification of mammals is herbivores. These are animals with a backbone that eat only plant materials. Plant eaters usually have large incisor teeth for cutting and chewing plants. They have large molars for grinding tough plants, and they have a different digestive system to allow for slow digestion of plant fibers. Elephants are our first project. It's hard to believe that an animal this big eats plants. We've designed a clay box that copies an elephant's hide. From large to small, the next herbivore is a comical squirrel sock puppet. Then we've got more fuzzy, giant pipe cleaners to transform into a zebra. Last, it's your favorite mammal t-shirt, from panthers to birds, made into a tote or duffel bag. So let's get crafting. Our first herbivore is the elephant. He's a very large animal, but he eats only plants. And we're making this great box and simulating the elephant hide using clay. So our supplies are black and white oven-baked clay, we have a paper mache box, we have some black paint, then we also have our clay tools, a roller, rubber bands, and some clear glue. The first thing I want to do is to protect my work surface because I want to make sure that this is not going to touch any food items later. So I put wax paper down. I'm going to take my paper mache box and put a layer of clear glue on top and let that die dry so that it just has a little bit more tacky or a kind of rubbery appearance. Now I'm going to make some clay and to get this gray color I've mixed two parts white and one part clay, black. I'm going to just mix these three together and what you do is you're going to work this in your hand or um, condition the clay so that it's soft and pliable. And then I'm going to roll it together and I'm going to continue rolling until the colors mix together. And a nice tip to help make this a little bit easier is I can roll that down out flat, but I can also use a pasta machine. And if you put the clay into the pasta machine and roll it through, you get a nice thin layer of clay. And then we can roll that back in until you continue mixing and we'll keep going through the pasta machine over and over again. Remember, this pasta machine is not for really for pasta, it is just for clay and you don't want to use it for food. So I continue going until I get it to the color that I want by putting it through or if you don't have one of those, just by rolling it, rolling it back on itself and keep rolling until you get that good color. Now I've been playing with this one for a long time and you can see there's still a little bit of white Let's run it through the machine one more time to make it nice and thin. And now I'm ready to cover my box lid. So I've got my box lid here. I'm going to lay this on top. Let's make sure that's big enough. Center it on. Let's fold that up around the sides. 
And because of that little bit of extra tackiness on the side too, it helps it adhere nice, nicely to the box. Now I'm gonna just kind of pinch that off, that excess, kind of like you were icing a cake. And then I'm going to go back with my clay tools and trim off any excess. Cut that off a little bit. I can trim down here as well. Remember, clay is going to stretch so you can pull down the shape. And I don't want to have too much excess to the inside because then my box isn't going to close as easily. Now you'll take the time at home to make this nice and smooth. And you can see now my clay still had some strike, some coloration in it, and that's fine. Okay, the next step is I'm going to take my box and put it on top of my bottom, upside down or put the lid on top of the bottom. Slide that down. And now this is how I'm going to get my texture. I'm going to go in with rubber bands. You can overlap some, but the majority of them, they just want them to be next to each other. And I put them all the way across the entire top. And I'm, let's do one half of the box so you can see but you continue to the whole box. Then I'm going to take my clay roller and I'm going to roll along this, just using a nice even pressure. And anywhere I've got the rubber band, if you pull these off, you're going to get that striation or a stripe into it. And that is creating the texture that looks like your elephant hide. Now, of course, we do the whole thing. I'm going to remove my lid, and now it's time to bake this. I'm going to put it onto my oven safe tile, and I'm going to bake following the instructions that are on the packaging of the clay. Now while that's going, I'm going to paint my box. So I've got my paint and uh, brush all in one. I'm going to squeeze that down, and you can see the paint come to the top, and I'm going to paint this box. And I paint the bottom of the box the sides, let that dry, and then continue and paint the inside of the box. I've got one that's all painted and ready here, so it's all done. Now, this is a clay piece that has been uh, already heated in, in, and heated and baked, so it's nice and hard. So now I'm going to go back with my paint, and I'm going to brush this along the top. Now, you can add a little water if you'd like, I'm going along the side as well. Now I'm going to take a damp paper towel and rub over the top and take off a little bit of the excess paint. So what I wanted to do is kind of get right down into the cracks and crevices. Now if I want to add more, I'll just go back in again with my paint, go along the edge. So let's take a look at our finished box. It's a perfect place to store treasures. From elephants to squirrels, they're all herbivores, and I'd rather hold a squirrel in my hand than an elephant, and so we're going to make a hand puppet using a sock. Let's look over at our other supplies. We're going to need 3D paints, as well as opaque painter markers, and we also have a marker that has a cutting tool inside of it. We need a gray sock, we need a bit of cotton batting, and a piece of gray stiffened felt, and we're going to use a little bit of gray fun fur, some pipe cleaners, and our basic tools, we have some instant glue that we're going to use to make our puppet. Um, getting started, the first step you'll take is to print out your pattern and then cut it out. And I've gone ahead and drawn it onto our gray stiffened felt. So that's the mouth, the eyes, our ears, and the teeth for the squirrel. So you can see it all on there. I'm going to take our cutter that has also a felt tip pen, and I'm going to use it to cut out each of our pieces in felt. The nice thing about this is I'm going to get a really great black outline around each of the pieces that I cut out with it. If you have um, some of the finer details, you might want to try using scissors for. So I'm just going to push firmly down, and I'm gonna, I have a cutting mat underneath there to protect my surface, and firmly down all the way around the mouth and now pop it out. And the next step is to take one of the opaque markers and we're gonna color in a little bit more detail on the mouth. Those, now you might need to push down to get the paint flowing on the marker and it will give you a really nice opaque color. And this of course is the inside of the squirrel's mouth. 
Once that's all done, you would proceed and cut out the ears and the eyes and the teeth and add detail to each of those. And you want to let that dry for just a little bit after you're finished coloring it. So you can see I've got a mouth finished over here and the teeth, ears and eyes. So the next step is to begin assembling your squirrel. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put the sock on my hand. I'm going to hold the batting as I put it on so that the batting is on top of my hand. And then I'm going to push in the tip of the toe and form a mouth. And you can see the heel of the sock is kind of on the back of my wrist. And once that's done, I'm going to hold the mouth shut, take the whole sock off my hand, and I'm going to place it onto a cup. And that way I can keep working on it and have both hands to use. I'm going to pull it right down. You can see my mouth is still right there. So the next step is I'm going to take the instant glue and I'm going to glue the teeth to the top of the mouth. Just like this. Give it a second to dry. It dries very fast and you don't want to get the wet glue on your fingers. Once the teeth are in place, we'll add a bit more instant glue all around the top and bottom of the mouthpiece. Again, be careful so that you don't end up gluing your fingers to your squirrel. There we go. And I'll insert the mouth into the opening that I left for it. Tuck it right in and you want to open it up. Oh, and there go my fingers. And then if you've missed a little piece like this, you can pull the sock right up and it will stick right onto the felt. There we go. We'll bend our teeth back down. And if you need to, you can add a little bit more glue and pull the sock so that it covers the whole mouth. Once that's done, we're going to repeat the same thing and we're going to add a few drops of glue to the ears along the bottom. Put them in place. One on each side. And the same for the eyes. And then we're going to begin the tail. Just set this aside. Now remember, if you're using the instant glue, you'll want parental supervision. If you have younger viewers, you might be better off using a tacky glue so that it's a little bit safer. For our tail, we're going to go ahead and take our fun fur and open it up. And we're going to use the tacky glue for this part of the project. And we're going to put a line of glue all the way around the edges of the tail. We can put it on fairly thickly so that it holds it really good. And then we're also going to put three lines of glue up the center of it. And that's where our pipe cleaners go. So each of those will stay in place. And at home, you'll want to give this a little bit of time to dry. And then we'll fold it in half and press it. Now after this has had sufficient time to drive, then you would go ahead and put glue on the back of your squirrel and the tail sits right onto the back like this. You could use elastic bands to hold that part of it in place while it dries. We've also added a little bit of hair on top of the squirrel and what I've done for that is just pulled all the little bits of fuzz off of the tail and we can use some tacky glue to hold that in place. And as a final touch to the squirrel, we put a nice little nose on it in the shape of a heart, if you'd like. And we used our 3D color paints to do that with. After everything's all dry, you'll have a fun hand puppet to put on a great show. Next, we're going to make some more fun chenille animals. Of course, a mouse, a monkey, a zebra, and a giraffe are all herbivores. And the first one we're going to make is the zebra. Um, your basic supplies are glue, and the additional supplies you'll need are the jumbo chenille stems. And you can either use the pre-cut ones or the lengths and cut them into 20-inch lengths. And of course, we'll need plastic eyes. First, we're going to start with the zebra. So we're going to take three three stems and matching colors is great and we're going to start by bending an ear into the top stem and then we're going to bend again into a v-shape to make the zebra's nose next we're going to do one more ear like this and then the bottom piece is just going to come up and stick out the back just like that next we're going to do a leg so we'll set that guy aside we're going to bend it in half again we're going to give it a twist up these are the feet and then we're going to bend that stem around the body twice. So we're going to shorten up the legs a little bit. We bend each one around, 
even them out and then tuck it up nice and close to the head just like that this piece is just going to stay sticking out and we're going to do the other legs so this one we bend straight in half first and we're going to give it a twist at the top and this twist is going to be the tail and then we're going to curve up the feet and the other side this is so simple again just like balloon animals now we're going to take where our tail is and open up the circle there and insert that onto the stem wrap that last little stem around the tail then around the body there we go bend our tail down into shape and he's going to stand up nicely for us come on there little zebra there we go and last but not least we'll put a little bit of glue on and put our eyes in place one zebra just like that okay next is the giraffe for this one we're going to need four of the jumbo stems and we're going to start by doing the ears again so we're going to do a bend up that's the first ear and then we're going to do a little circle down so we're just going to loop back around and twist around that first ear circle down then we're going to do a second ear and then this is kind of the giraffe's nose so it just bends up give everything a twist to keep it in place just like that next we're going to do the neck so we're going to take a stem bend it in half give it a good bend in the center and then that little circle that we made let's get everybody straightened out here the little circle that's going down that's where we're going to insert the stem give it a twist twist all the way down and that is the giraffe's neck we're going to keep twisting and the bottom third is going to bend back that is our body so now you can see how my head is tilting down a bit if you just twist the stems it bends the wire that's in the center core and keeps everything nicely in place next are our legs so we're going to bend it in half curl up the toes and we can curl it fairly short so that you have a good kind of ratio shorter legs and a longer neck and then around twice again once for each leg bend the legs into place and repeat the same for the other leg bend in half curl up oops give that one a better curl onto the body and around twice so simple the nice thing about these creatures compared to balloon animals is that these ones wouldn't pop so you can keep them forever now I'm just going to bend that last little piece up to hold my legs in place the tail squish the neck a little bit more to hold the head up high and again we're ready for our eyes a little dot of glue and you have two herbivores. Our last segment today is a duffel bag or a tote. We're starting out with a t-shirt and as you can see here we can make it into a duffel to hold your track shoes or for sports equipment or you can make it into a bag. Now this show is about herbivores um, and what we can do is create a design using a, an herbivore or your favorite. A lot of times you can start with a finished t-shirt that you might have from a sports team or it might be something from your school and it might be an herbivore or maybe another animal. The other thing that you might choose to do is to paint. We started out here with a stencil, stenciled it on and added a painted hippopotamus who is an herbivore. Or here we've taken the negative of the stencil, cut it out of fabric, pinned it to the front and we're gonna use it as an applique. Now when you're sewing it's really important to choose the right thread. And we're going to choose a thread that matches the color of your bag or matches the trim. The other thing you want to do is use an all-purpose thread. Because t-shirts are so nice and stretchy, we want to kind of counterbalance that stretch and have it be a little bit more stable. So we're using an all-purpose thread that has a cotton poly blend so that we don't get a lot of stretch. So let's get started. The first thing that we're going to do is to take our shirt and lay it out. We want to cut the sleeves off. We're going to cut from the shoulder line down. and we'll do that on both sides. This would be a fun way to use some of your old shirts up. It would be also a good thing if you're going away to a new school or to college is to make uh, a t-shirt or a bag out of one of your favorite shirts. Then I'm going to cut down about three inches from the collar making sure that I don't interfere with the design. I'm just going to lay my ruler across and slice the top of that shirt off. And now you have a decision to make. How long do you want this shirt to be? 
or this tote to be. So you can cut it off at any point. So we're not going to make it too big because I think it's going to just carry a pair of shoes. And now we have our fabric ready to go. Now some shirts are going to have a side seam up the side and some like this are just going to be plain. So we're going to turn our shirt inside out. We want to match our seams or match the areas that we cut under each arm and we're going to stitch down. Now what we're going to do is take into account that we want to cut across this area. If it's easier for you, you can draw it with a pencil just to kind of give you an idea of a nice angle. And we're going to start matching this together. Now we're going to go to our sewing machine. Now, of course, as I was telling you earlier, we would match our thread to the, co to the color of our t-shirt. But since I want you to be able to see this on TV, I'm going to use white. So I'll put my feed dog down, press her foot down, and I'm going to start stitching. And I'm using just a straight stitch. I also have a ballpoint needle in my machine that will sew through a knit better. And I'm going to continue tapering down. And go all the way down to the bottom. Lift my presser foot. Trim my threads. Then I do the same thing on the other side. And in the interest of time, I'm only going to do one. I'd go back and trim. Then I'm also going to come across the bottom and stitch along the bottom. This is a good way to introduce you to the sewing machine because it's all just very simple straight stitching. Now we want to turn our bag, remember I haven't sewed that other side seam for you. We're going to turn our bag right side out and we have the shape of our tote. Now the one thing we want to do is we want to give it a little bit stability or make um, a, uh, a um, gusset in the bottom of the bag. So I'm going to turn, let's poke this through. I'm going to match my side seams to the center and cut across right here with a stitch. And I'll show you what that looks like in a second when you see it. What that's doing is creating what's called a gusset at the bottom. It's going to give stability to the bag. And then I'm going to stitch that back up like this and then it's got a pleat and it gives a little bit more shape to the bag. At this point too, if you were sewing on your applique, this would be a good time to do it before you've closed in the top of the bag. Now the next thing we want to do is we want to turn this in a half inch and if you were at home you would press this all along and then we're going to sew our ribbon trim. Let's go to this one here so I can show you what I've done. I've got this one all pinned. This bag is a beige one. And I've turned my ribbon in about a half inch here and pinned. If you pin going vertically like this along your ribbon, then you'll be able to stitch. Now I'm going to stitch along the top and along the bottom. I've pinned it all the way around the top of the bag. And then when I get to the end, I'm going to turn that under again and I'm leaving a space at the very center front because that's where my drawstring is going to go in. Let's put one more pin. Got my pins underneath here. And we pin right through here. Now, in the interest of time, I'm not going to stitch all the way around, but we are going, we would stitch all the way here and all the way along here. Then we're going to take, once we're done, we're going to take our drawstring and feed it through this little channel that's been created because that's what's going to use to pull up the bag. 
Now the other step that we're going to do is remember I had that little square that I, I stitched here. We would go back and stitch a triangle right here. So let me show you on the finished bag. And if you'd like to even give more stability, you can add a strip of ribbon here sewing on both sides. That'll keep that from stretching at all. Add a handle and that will make it a bag or just leave it like it is and make it into a little drawstring tote. And that's your herbivore tote. Thank you for watching Hands On. On our next show, we give equal time to the meat-eating mammals. You might be surprised at some of the animals included in this group. See you then on Hands On. Projects from today's show plus other ideas are available on the web at craftsforkids.com. This is show 1205. Hands On is sponsored in part by Elmer's Products, Inc., Manufacturers of a variety of adhesives, arts and crafts, and office products for use at home, school, or business for over 60 years. www.elmers.com Stadler Incorporated, inspiring creativity for more than 150 years. Available wherever fine art and craft supplies are sold. www.stadler.us Hi, I'm Kathy Stahl, host of Hands-On Crafts for Kids. I hope you'll join us each week as we show you craft basics and great projects, each with five steps and five main ingredients. We have a lot of crafting fun in store for you. And remember what we all say at Hands-On Crafts for Kids, there's no right or wrong way, only your way. Be creative, have fun. We hope you'll join us for Hands-On Crafts for Kids. Lions and tigers and bears, oh my. Hi, I'm Kathy Stull, host of Hands-On Crafts for Kids. Our newest series is all about living things. We'll be crafting projects about mammals, amphibians, reptiles, insects, and more. All the projects have five steps and five main ingredients. Join us for Hands-On Crafts for Kids and be creative and have fun.